New reef tanks are exciting. Designing your aquascape, thinking about the fish and coral that you're going to have, new lights, brand new pumps, it's all fresh and exciting and clean. Nothing's got corroded yet. There's no salt buildup somewhere that you got to get a little toothpick in to clean it out. All you have to worry about is getting through your tank's initial cycling period. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this video is all about reef tank maintenance. When you should do it, what you should do, and really everything you need to know for both a brand new reef tank as well as an older reef tank that you've had running for a while. This is just an intro, of course, as anything with reef stuff, you can go way in detail. So this is just to get your ideas started. And this is a long video, so there are some time codes for chapters down below in the description. Feel free to skip to the part you're actually interested in. So, your brand new reef tank. For the next few weeks, you're going to be going through what's called cycling. Really, all you're doing is building up colonies of different species of bacteria that are able to process ammonia into nitrite and nitrite into nitrate. This takes a few weeks, maybe six or seven weeks, to get fully set up and running. But at the end of it, you're going to have stable colonies of both Nitrosoma and Nitrobacter bacteria, and those are the ones that process those chemicals. At that point, you should be testing your tank's ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate every day or two. Keep track of the values that you see. You're going to see that ammonia will spike first, and then it'll decrease, and nitrite will be increasing, and then nitrite will decrease, and nitrate will start to increase. Once the nitrate has started to fall again, your cycle is complete. The goal here is not to have nitrate at zero, but to get it close to zero. When your tank is at that level, you're ready to start adding fish and other livestock like coral. It's at this point that you should also do your first water change. About 20% of your water every week or two is a good amount to change. If you do any water changes before your cycle is complete, your cycle's only going to take longer, so there's no reason to do water changes while your tank is cycling unless something horrible happens to your tank, power outage, something horrible like that. If you want to speed up your tank's cycle, you can add some sand or a piece of live rock from an established tank. Be careful though, that's a great way to introduce pest algae, bristle worms, all sorts of things like that. So only take sand or rock from a tank whose owner you trust and which you know to be clean and free of those kinds of things that you don't want in your tank. You can also use a bacterial product like ProdBio Digest or Microbacter Start, and those are just going to seed all the needed strains of bacteria into your tank, but it really isn't required for success. Some people also put a frozen shrimp or two in the tank to decompose. I've even heard of people peeing in their tank to add nutrients up front, but again, not required. I wouldn't recommend peeing in your reef tank, although there are people who do it. So to recap, if you have a brand new reef tank, all you need to do is use one of these little test kits. This one is a nitrate test kit. Test for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Wait till your cycle is complete. Then start doing regularly, weekly, or every other week water changes. And maybe give your equipment a good cleaning at the end there just to get any of the collected goo that comes out during cycling out. Once your tank is finished cycling, you can add all the fish and coral that you want. Remember, little by little, not all at once. And then that will begin the maintenance that we're going to talk about for the rest of this video. So since your tank at this point is done cycling, the suggested care and maintenance that you need to do changes. You don't need to think as much about the nitrogen cycle, and your focus should instead be on the levels of nitrate, calcium, magnesium, alkalinity, things like that in your tank. Other elements like iodine are also important, particularly if you have lots of soft corals like zooanthids, and a lot of these trace elements will also make your acropora more colorful. Calcium and alkalinity are critical in tanks with stony coral, and you should test for those weekly, if not daily. There are several products on the market that can automate that for you. Running a daily test for calcium using this giant thing is a pain. So pick up something like the GHL Ion Director, KH Director, Neptune's Trident, the Alcatronic, these sorts of monitors are really the best way to go if you want frequent testing and you have lots of SPS corals. Because they can even be set to automatically monitor all that and dose them when it goes out of range. So you can often hook up a dosing pump, like I just mentioned, and you can not only report the level, but keep it constant over time, which is great and ideal for a reef tank. Using a system like this can automate a lot of the work involved in tuning a calcium reactor as well. 
And products like the Alcatronic or the KH Director from GHL can even interface with your calcium reactor to control how much calcium and alkalinity is being dosed from your reactor. There are lots of trace elements in our reef tanks, trace elements that are hard, if not impossible, to test for directly on their own. That's where an ICP test, like those from Triton or ATI, can be a huge help. By shining light through a superheated plasma of your tank's water, they can tell what elements and how much of them are in your tank's water. At the end, you'll get an extremely detailed look at the makeup of your water, and I think it's worth doing these tests as often as once a month or so if you can afford it. This is going to allow you to avoid running as so many manual tests, tests that are just complicated, have lots of steps, and you'll have all those reports online in one place to compare changes over time. Water changes on a tank that have been running for a while are much more important than those when you are just getting started. Water changes replenish all sorts of chemicals that your fish and coral need and give you an opportunity to just remove goo and gunk from your tank at the same time. Most people are going to recommend that you change 10 to 20% of your tank's volume each time you do a water change, and you should do them every week or every other week or so. You should obviously match the salinity and temperature of the water. You don't want to shock any of your fish or corals with sudden changes. Smaller water changes more often are probably better than one very large infrequent water change. And most people, as I mentioned, they're going to change their water every week or every other week. I like to do it on the weekends. It's just into a habit. Water changes replenish a lot of things, but some other chemicals needed in your tank might need to be dosed. If you're battling high levels of nitrate, you could be dosing vodka. If you have acro or acropora, acropower could be an option for you. Two-part calcium liquid alkalinity solutions. Those are all dosed independently of a water change that you might do on your tank. None of those, of course, are required for success, so don't worry too much about them if you're just getting started. When you need something like that, you'll know. If you do need to dose things like that, then a dosing pump is by far the easiest way to go about it. Just set your dosing pump to run for the required amount of time, and it's automatically going to dose every day the same amount every day. When you are doing a water change, an easy thing to do alongside is to use a gravel vacuum. These are just wide plastic tubes like this. They're just, you know, wider tubes at the end of a tube that allow you to get into your sand bed and remove the goo and junk that builds up there. And believe me, if you haven't done this for a while or you've never done it, you will know that you're getting stuff out because that water is going to be dark brown, full of silt, and it's going to be coming out of the sand bed. Most of us only have an inch or two of sand on our tanks. A lot of people have even less. For instance, I've removed almost all the sand over my tank over the last few months. An inch or two of sand is really not enough sand to have any large anaerobic areas in it. Particularly if you have nasarius snails, starfish, gobies, things like that that mix up the sand bed. If you do have a deep sand bed, then sure, don't vacuum it out because that defeats the whole purpose of it. But most of us really just have enough sand to look nice. And those shallow sand beds are going to benefit from regular cleaning, just like anything else would in our tank. And I would recommend vacuuming your sand bed every time you do a water change. It really does get a lot of stuff that's just going to decompose out of your tank. Every few months, it is a good idea to clean the inside, the impellers, the magnets in your pumps and other equipment like your skimmer. Hopefully, you've designed your tank's plumbing with valves and unions in it so that it's easy to remove the return pump and all of the other equipment from your sump. Pumps can then be disassembled for a soak in acid, a link above. And before doing that, of course, give them a good scrub with a toothbrush or something like that to remove anything obvious that's built up. Some pumps collect algae, um, you know, goo and just grime from your sump is be in your return pump. And it's a good idea to even Think about cleaning out your skimmer body every few months. It gets quite dirty just in the normal use of it, and they work better when they're clean. So that's really about it. That is the maintenance plan that I found works best for me, and you're going to develop your own personal schedule, but you should plan on doing you know, regular water changes on some schedule, and at least every few weeks you should also be testing for some elements, depending on what you have in your tank. If you have Acropora stony corals, of course, keep an eye on calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. And if nothing else, just get a Triton test every once in a while or an ATI ICP test 
and just do them every so often on some schedule, whatever fits your budget. It'll really just sort of fill in the blanks for what's going on in your tank. It's really not that hard to keep a reef tank healthy. You can do it. Hopefully this video gets you started. You know, let me know if you have questions. I'll try to do my best to answer them. Just leave them in the comments down below. Good luck. If you've made it this far, take a moment to subscribe to my channel as well. Stay safe. Coronavirus is still out there and have a fantastic day. Bye.